In all my rants and videos, you've probably heard me remark that evolution is an unguided process. Now, some have objected, saying, no, 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 you silly creationists, you have it all wrong. Natural selection is the guiding force behind evolution. You know, natural selection, survival of the fittest. Natural selection only selects from what we already have. It doesn't provide any new information, which really is what evolution needs. Natural selection was actually an idea first put forward by a creationist by the name of Edward Blythe. Later on, Darwin plagiarized this idea for his evolutionary theory. But can natural selection actually be the guiding force behind evolution? In short, nope. First of all, survival tends to be random. For example, it is assumed that humans evolved larger brains, therefore became more intelligent, that aided in their survival. However, just because you are really intelligent does not mean you are necessarily going to survive. Are, are we recording? Oh yes, we're recording. Okay, we, we here at the laboratories of Cold Fusion Solutions are excited to bring you via video the first full critical test run of our newly prototyped cold fusion reactor. I require the tactical modulator. Oh yes you do. Now the dry runs have been very promising and very hopeful. Now a unit this size theoretically can power up to 20 city blocks for up to 20 years with clean renewable Feel energy. Ready, Dr. Kleiner. Oh excellent. What are we waiting for? One second. Just in case. Okay, now, tridactical modulator shows good readings. Coolant is running at a good temperature. Starting phase arrays now. Criticality reached in. It's also assumed that if you're stronger and faster, that you'll out-survive the weaker. But that also is not necessarily true. Indian brave, Niagara, proving manhood. Niagara, swift like horse, strong like buffalo, brave like bear. But dumb like stick. And heavy like stone. And having lots and lots of offspring also does not mean that you or your offspring will necessarily survive. Don't worry, I'm not going to venture into some morbid humor about a large family in a minivan meeting their untimely demise. However, so, sweetie, what would you like to do today? Oh, I don't know. Maybe go to the beach with the kids? That sounds like a great idea. Yeah! Furthermore, evolution tends to give natural selection downright magical properties. Let's take the Irish elk, for example. One might ask, why does it have such large horns? Well, the answer would be because natural selection selected it. Then one asks the question, why then did the Irish elk become extinct? Well, because natural selection selected it out. Probably because of its extremely large horns, which it couldn't maintain. Thus, natural selection becomes an excuse, not an explanation. And these explanations can hardly be called scientific, seeing as how nobody has actually observed them. To top it all off, guidance requires foresight. What's good for you this year isn't necessarily good for you next year. Natural selection has no foresight. 
Therefore, it cannot be a guiding force. Furthermore, what we observe in nature is that the sick and the weak tend to be protected by the rest of the herd, and thus even the sick and the weak tend to live, survive, and have offspring. As it turns out, natural selection fights itself. A study carried by the American naturalist examined 62 species and roughly an estimated 2,500 different examples of natural selection. Of all those examples, they concluded that a whopping 16% were selected because of a beneficial trait, or a survival trait. Well, wait a minute. That means 84% of the traits selected had nothing to do with survivability. And thus, if they had nothing to do with survivability, they had an 84% chance of having nothing to do with directing evolution. Put it another way, if you somehow pick up a beneficial mutation, that means a natural selection has an 84% chance of weeding you out of the gene pool. That's reverse evolution. The most effective forms of selection we can study are unnatural selection or guided selection, such as eugenics and breeding. Well, thousands of years of breeding of dogs has shown us that dogs will evolve into dogs. But let's say natural selection really does work according to Darwinian claims. You'll notice that natural selection causes the opposite of evolution. Which can withstand extremes of temperature better, a bacteria or a human? Which can go longer without food or water, a bacteria or a human? Hey, can anybody hear me? Anybody? Hello? Which do you think natural selection will select? Bacteria reproducing asexually, or humans which require two incredibly complex genders to reproduce? Which has more offspring? A bacteria? Or a human? In fact, if natural selection really did work according to Darwinian claims, then it would actually invert the evolutionary tree. Think about it. Natural selection is going to select the hardiest of the life forms. Well, the life forms that are the hardiest and have the highest reproduction rates are bacteria. Other life forms, such as humans and the higher life forms, have a lower offspring rate and are more susceptible to extinction. So if natural selection really was true, and evolution really was true, and bacteria were the first forms of life, we should never have evolved past the bacteria. So. Evolution cannot produce the first life, see rants number 93 and 94. Evolution can't add more information, or new organs, etc., to that life, see rants number 35 and 78. And natural selection only selects from what we already have, and what it does select is the opposite of upwards-onwards evolution. Therefore, scientifically speaking, evolution is bankrupt. All of these observations, however, cause no problems for the creation model, which is based on the Holy Bible, which says we were created by none other than Jesus Christ. That Bible also tells us that the whole reason we even have natural selection is because we are in a world that has been marred and corrupted by sin. That's disobedience to that Creator. Now, that Creator says he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth and that the only way to enter into that new heaven and new earth is through being born again. So what are you waiting for today? Are you waiting for natural selection or some completely random event to end your life? Instead of handing over your life to the protection of that Savior, Jesus Christ, who provided a way to the new heaven and new earth for you? Well, hope you sleep well tonight.